As we gather to celebrate the third Sunday at an ordinary time, we welcome all of you. <clears throat> Friday, February 17th, is the mother-daughter overnight retreat for girls grades one through eight. RSVPs are due. Please call the parish office to register. Saturday, January 28th, is a bowling event at Fisher Lanes for all in grades 1 through 8. Please send in the permission form. Children's bulletins are located in the entrance of the church. Don't forget to take one on the way home today. And ladies, please join us for the annual Archdiocesan Beauty in Christ Women's Conference on Saturday, January 28th. The conference is being hosted at St. Columkill in Presentation Hall. For more information, please check the bulletin or call the parish office. Our, father, our presider this evening is Father Dellert, assisted by Deacon Bill. Please silence your cell phones as we take a few moments to prepare for Mass. The Dubuque Area Youth Ministers would like to welcome all of the middle schoolers who are attending Mass here tonight before we have a lock-in. So please welcome them as you see them sitting all right there. And uh, welcome them and, and pray for them tonight as they, uh, as they uh, play lots of games. Thank you. Showing me all that I must see 
onward to the kingdom. You are the way. Arise in me, and I shall rise with you. Christ in me, arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, arise, and I shall rise with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you fulfill all the words of the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the great light in our world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to leave everything behind to follow you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. First, the Lord degraded the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the end, he has glorified the seaward road, the land west of the Jordan, the district of the Gentiles. Anguish has taken wing, dispelled is darkness, for there is no gloom where but now there was distress. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing, as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my 
salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is listening. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and went to live in Capernaum by the sea in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As he was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea were fishermen. He said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. He walked along from there and saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee mending their nets. 
He called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, everybody. Special welcome to our young friends who are here to attend a lock-in. I thought I might check before you go to get locked in. If there are any last-minute takers, I can have you talk to Mark after Mass. A few years ago, Pope Francis asked Christians throughout the world to celebrate this third Sunday of Ordinary Time each year as Word of God Sunday. Word of God Sunday. It's an opportunity for us to reflect on our devotion to the Word of God, to promote the study of sacred scripture, and to ask ourselves, how do we honor the Word of God in our lives? First, consider that the Word of God is intended to be proclaimed. Before the Bible was fully written and compiled and organized, the Word of God was proclaimed. It was preached. That's how Jesus started, as we heard in the Gospel. We do well to read and study the Bible on our own, but we should remember that this is not like other kinds of reading. It's intended to be proclaimed, preached, lived, shared. The Word of God was first proclaimed in a region of Zebulun and Naphtali, where a people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. In a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. The proclamation of the gospel is as light in dark places. It has the power to illuminate and brighten our world. The choice of Jesus to first share in the, wor the word in this region shows us that the word of God should be shared everywhere. It's not just to be heard in churches or in places of prominence. It should be heard everywhere that God's people go. And you also know that the gospel is communicated not only with words, but often and very often more, very often more compelling with actions. There's also meant to be proclaimed, as we hear in scripture, both in season and out of season, when it is well received and also when it isn't, when it is popular and when it is unpopular. Long before the word of God was uh, compiled, it has been shared and listened in so many places. Even the illiterate had access to the word of God. And if we have been given the gift to be able to read, the word of God hopefully should be among the first in our list. It's also good to remember that as we think of the word of God as intended to be proclaimed, we remember it's intended to be shared together. That is to say, we should listen to it with the church. If we were to ever come to the conclusion that my interpretation of what the Bible means uh, is the only one I will ever go for and not listen to any other interpretations, even that of the church handed down through the centuries, we kind of sound like those in the second reading that we heard today, right? Uh, there were rivalries that broke out. There was no unity. Uh, that's why Paul asks, is Christ divided? Is his word divided? We should listen to the word of God together. A dozen years or so ago, I was invited to the home of an elderly parishioner to bring her Holy Communion and to have a little chat because she was having a hard time. Someone had made her feel bad for not having a Bible in her home. She asked me, Father, am I a bad Christian because I don't own a Bible? She told me that she does read her missal every day. I asked her, can I see that? She handed me her daily missal from the table next to her chair, and it was pretty worn down from many years of use. I opened it and pointed to all the scripture readings that she had read every day for years. 
I said, your Bible is in that missile. I told her that she was not a bad Christian, that I would be really happy if every one of my parishioners would take a little extra time to read the Sunday readings each week, either before or after Mass, and I would be over the moon thrilled if each read the readings every day of the week. We need the Word of God to be proclaimed to us, whether that is an electionary style, using the readings at Mass, or whether we use a daily devotional or uh, 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 access scripture on an app or some kind of other technology. There's even a podcast now, or last year, one of the most popular ones in the world, where you can work through the entire Bible in a year with Father Schmitz. Or just open up a Bible and start reading it. And if you don't have a Bible in your home, please, please let me know. We'll be sure to remedy that. There is room in each of us to improve upon the way we proclaim the word of God and the way we allow the word to be proclaimed to us. None of us should ever be able to say that we are expert in scriptures. I can introduce you to someone that makes what I do look like drawing with crayons. Uh, we're never going to come to the end of this. We should commit ourselves to deepening our knowledge and understanding of scripture. As St. Jerome once said, Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. We should do our best according to our abilities. Second, the word of God is to be taught. We need teaching, study, guidance to help us receive and understand the word of God. St. Paul tells us in his second letter to Timothy, all scripture is inspired by God and useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction and for training in righteousness. The Bible is a teaching authority for us. The scriptures are used for correction and training so that we may confront the present evils of our times. And part of our goal in this life is to submit ourselves to this authority that is transmitted to us through God's holy and inspired word. We also do well to remember that the church is the custodian of scripture and gives us guidance for that interpretation. Sometimes we will have to drop ideas and mentalities and attitude and assumptions and opinions that we may have formed over the years in order to lay hold of the wisdom that comes from the word of God. Let's go back to the scene of our gospel today when Peter and Andrew, James and John received the invitation to follow Jesus. I wonder if they took one last look at their nets in their hands before they dropped them and thought about what they were letting go of, of their livelihoods and all the familiar things they had come to know. They heard the word and so they let the nets drop from their hands. So what do we need to let go of? What needs to fall if we are to embrace the wisdom of the word of God and permit ourselves to be taught and guided by it. Third, the word of God is shared to help us heal and cure the wounds in our own lives and in those around us. The word of God has the power to heal us. And I don't make that claim lightly either. The Bible is not like any other book that can be read and studied and put back on a shelf. The Word of God is alive. And that is because Christ is present to us in his Holy Word. We read in the letter to the Hebrews, the Word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the hearts. This is why, even though we read the same scriptures year after year, in church or on our own, the Bible can still offer us something fresh and new that speaks to our situation and our life. Really, if you think about it, if you pick up a Bible, you should realize this was written for me and to me. So much so, I know that the Bible is written for each of you. We have a living word, a word that sometimes confronts us sharply. It calls out to us not only to change certain things in our lives, but it goes even deeper than that. 
The word of God first reaches within. It speaks to the heart, following from what we learn in the letter to the Hebrews. St. Augustine, commenting on the beginning of John's gospel, explains that just as each of us were created through the word of God, so now through that same word we should be recreated. The word of God possesses the power to heal, to restore in us what is broken, the wounds of the soul, the mind, and yes, even the body. The living voice of God brings us to health. As the late Pope Benedict XVI once wrote, he writes, in the word of God, proclaimed and heard, and in the sacraments, Jesus says today, here and now, to each person, I am yours, I give myself to you. So, we can receive and respond, saying in return, I am yours. May God bless you. I believe in one God, in the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and punished his body. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and trust in Jesus, as those first disciples left behind what they knew to follow him, we entrust our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father that our church leaders and all who preach the good news of Jesus lead lives of fidelity to Christ and serve him with great joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of all nations strive to ease the burdens of those who live in the darkness of war, violence, abuse, poverty, or oppression, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all gathered here will be given the courage and the strength to answer the call of Jesus in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people suffering from cold, hunger, homelessness, or natural disasters be kept safe, be kept safe, warm, and healthy through our prayers and our actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we at, at St. Joseph the Worker grow in greater awareness of those who are in need of our prayer, the sick, the lonely, the dying, and those who have no one to pray for them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Harper Bergmeier and her family know the love and support of our parish through our prayers as they celebrate baptism this weekend. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the soul of Marilyn Sampson, Paul Pekosh, father of Brian Pekosh, and all who have died, that they experience abundant joy and rejoice in the great light of God's eternal kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you promised a great light for the people who linger in darkness. Receive our humble prayers and grant that we too may light the way for our church and our world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
me to see your face. Open my eyes, Lord. Help me to see. Open my ears, Lord. Help me to hear your voice. Open my ears, Lord. Help me to to love like you. Open my heart, Lord. Help me to love. I live within you. Deep in your heart, oh Lord, I live within you. Rest now in to see your face. Open my eyes, Lord. Help me to see. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of, the, out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. And by the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Oh. Uh. 
mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, we, and, as we offer, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Agnes, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to proclaim the gospel with your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Peach. 
Oh, I missed you too. It's been so long. <laughs>